Like this video and subscribe to the channel right now and get one week of amazing luck. Many animals choose to live the majority of their lives underground. These animals are among the strangest you'll ever come across. They are commonly referred to as subterranean fauna. They were able to adapt to a life without plants and nearly no light, making them a unique phenomenon. There are few animals that can boast of living underground, but we should all honor the small critters who can survive in such tough conditions. In this video, we will take a look at some of the most interesting animals that choose to spend their lives underground. Number 12. Bilby. Bilbies are endemic to Australia and are bandicoots with rabbit ears. They are nocturnal like their relatives, but their fur is softer, and they have bushy tails and long ears like rabbits. From a distance, they appear to be newborn kangaroos however, upon closer inspection, they are deemed vulnerable species because some of the species are extinct. They mature to the size of typical rabbits and live on their own. Their home is almost six feet below the Earth's surface, and you can't blame them for leading solitary lives, if they lived on the planet's surface, they'd probably not exist today. The bilby is roughly the size of a domestic cat, with males increasing to be larger than females. An adult male can weigh up to 2 kilos and grow up to half a meter. They formerly covered 70% of Australia, but now only 15% of the country is covered by them. Because of the broad provision, they can construct tunnels that provide cover during hot weather or when they need to flee from predators. Number 11. Jerboa. Jerboas are little rodents found in deserts. They're famous for their capacity to leap great distances. Their long back legs facilitate in this mobility, which allows them to flee from predators. It's worth noting that they can jump 10 feet in a single jump, which is rather astounding. They are found in deserts in Africa and Asia, and there are over 30 species known. They are only 4 inches long and dwell in burrows, where their activity increases at night. Because they rarely leave the house, little is known about these guys. Jerboas feed on desert plants during the rainy season, but when the plants dry up, they dig up the roots and consume the roots instead. They do not drink water, however, due to the moisture in the food they eat, desert-living jerboas do the majority of their feeding at night when it is colder. During the winter, chilly desert-dwelling derogates hibernate and subsist on their body fat. Number 10. Clam. Unlike many other maritime organisms, the clam rarely sees the light of day. They not only live in the ocean, but they also dig their way to the ocean floor, where they make their home. These animals feed on plankton and can be found in a variety of water bodies around the world. Clam is a common name for various types of mollusks and bubbles. They have two equal-sized shells that are shortened by two adductor muscles. Clams are filter feeders with powerful feet that can dig into the mud. They can live from 1 to 500 years depending on the species. Their technique of reproduction is known as spawning, and it occurs when males release their eggs into the water and females have internally stored eggs. The female then drags the eggs within their bodies to fertilize them, each of them can release up to 5 million eggs, which develop into larvae over time. Number 9. Pandolin. There are around 8 pandolin species split across two continents, yet they are all endangered. This species is primarily nocturnal and digs vast burrows where they sleep and breed. It is covered in strong overlapping scales and eats termites and ants with its extremely long tongue. When fully extended, these tongues can cover half of the animal's body. The pangolin stomach is muscular, with carotenoid spines projecting into the inside. Since they are secretive scientists are having a hard time studying them in the wild. Although it's unknown how long they live in the wild scientists suspect it could be up to 20 years. It's no wonder that they prefer to dwell underground because their limbs are designed for digging, each paw has five toes that it utilizes to destroy the termite colony. They run swiftly and frequently sniff the air by raising on their hind legs, they're also excellent swimmers, with some adapting to climbing as well. Illegal wildlife and poaching continue to be major causes of scarcity in our ecosystems. Number 8. Prairie Dog. Prairie dogs are prevalent in North American meadows and can be identified by the mounds of earth near their barrels. These subsurface colonies are intricate, with approximately 50 entrances and exits per acre. They can keep an eye out for predators and hide from them thanks to a special lookout location near the exit hole. Foxes, bobcats, ferrets, and eagles are among their common predators. 
These canines spend the majority of their time building their house, which they share with footed ferrets, burrowing owls, and snakes. According to scientists, there are around five kinds of this animal, with black-tailed dogs being the most common. A big group of hundreds of animals occupies less than half a square mile. The largest known town was around 2,500 square miles in size and was located in Texas. Much of the area where this animal life has been converted to pasture or farmland. Number 7. Burrowing Owl. You would not think of an owl as one of the animals who dwell underground, but not all species make the deepest section of the earth their home. The burrowing owl is beautiful and enjoys hanging out in caverns occupied by other animals such as armadillos and skunks. These owls also dig tunnels, some of which are more than 8 feet deep. This species is distinct from other owls in that it is active throughout the day at ground level, catching insects during the day and mammals at night. Males keep an eye on the hull while females tend to their pups. Because of human activities such as automobile collisions, poisoning of prairie dog colonies, and pesticide use, prairie dog habitats are shrinking globally. However, you can find them in diverse areas around Canada and South America. Their average lifespan is 6 to 8 years. One fun fact about these animals is that they collect mammal waste and put it around their nest to attract dung and deal with their favorite meal. Number 6. Pika. Pika is a herbivore from the mammalian family that can be found in Eastern Europe, North America, and Asia. They communicate by making a peculiar whistling sound. Although they resemble rabbits, they are much smaller and subsist on seeds harvested during warmer seasons. As herbivores, they adore long wildflowers, grass, and weeds and bury the food underground to feed in the winter. They chose the haven as their underground home because they didn't have good nesting habits. This is why they begin to construct caverns that serve more than just as a shelter. These houses improve the soil quality in the area and help to prevent erosion. Despite their benign appearance, they are the smallest members of the lag morph group and one of North America's strongest creatures. Their black and brown skin color helps them blend in with the rocks, while their fur keeps them warm in the winter. Pikas are becoming extinct as a result of global warming because they are accustomed to colder regions. Number 5. Naked Mole Rat. Naked mole rats, as the name implies, are completely hairless subterranean rodents that dwell in underground colonies in Africa. They have a well-organized caste system, with the queen at the apex. These rats have large protruding teeth and are nearly blind, allowing them to adapt to their surroundings temperatures. A naked mole rat is around 3 inches long and weighs between 1 and 1.5 ounces. They have tiny eyes, so they're largely blind, but they're sensitive to vibrations on the ground and movement in their surroundings. These burrowing rats consume succulent tubers by boring into the interior and consuming them while keeping the thin epidermis intact. This activity guarantees that the plant continues to develop and provide for the animal. The diet of the species is heavy in cellulose, making it difficult to digest. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take me 5 seconds to complete. So here's the deal you just leave a like on this video smash that subscribes button and hit the notification bell, and you'll get 15 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Number 4. Badger. The skunk is the closest mammal in appearance to the badger, and it lives in an enormous underground burrow called sets. The majority of them live in clans of 2 to 15 animals, and they communicate with one another by echoing sounds with their sets. They can be found in Europe, Asia, and North America. The badger is an omnivore that eats both plants and animals. It also eats fruit, bird's eggs, mammals, snails, slugs, and bird eggs. You probably haven't seen this animal because it only leaves its habitat at night and returns during the day. Despite the fact that badgers can mate any time they choose, they only have one litter per year due to delayed implantation. One to five kids are born underground and stay in the birthing chamber for up to eight weeks. According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, most badgers are neither threatened nor endangered, which is welcome news given the number of endangered species. Although they do not often hibernate, they will spend weeks in their dens during the cold months. Number 3. Meerkats. Meerkats are a form of mongoose found in Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and Botswana. From head to rump, these little creatures measured 9.75 to 11.75 inches. 
They inhabit in open plains and meadows, digging holes in homes established by other ground animals such as squirrels. These enormous holes have dozens of escape routes in case they are ever threatened. They've also installed restrooms and sleeping quarters because this animal lives in large groups known as clans and gangs or mobs, and they require that. A group of roughly 50 meerkats hide in their burrow to avoid predators. Unlike most underground creatures, they have many houses and rotate around residing in them. They begin their day by laying in the sun and relaxing and then spend the remainder of the day looking for food until a predator appears. After one hour of hunting, the hunter is changed by another animal, ensuring that everyone can forage. Even though they are classified as carnivores, adults are immune to scorpion bites but children are not. Number 2. Dwarf Mongoose The dwarf mongoose can be found in Africa, and it is the smallest species of mongoose. You will notice that most of these animals that live underground are extremely small. The dwarf mongooses inhabit the eastern parts of the African continent and are known to live up to eight years. Dwarf mongooses eat mostly insects, including beetles and grasshoppers, though they may also eat spiders, scorpions, small vertebrates, eggs, and fruit. They spend most of their days looking for food among brush, leaves, and rocks. Mongooses are often afraid of humans because humans are larger and impossible for them to hunt. They will fight with humans as they will fight with other large animals if the humans threaten them or their babies, but they try to avoid encounters with humans as much as possible. Number 1. Mole. Moles are small mammals adapted to a subterranean lifestyle. They have cylindrical bodies, velvety fur, very small, inconspicuous eyes and ears, reduced hind limbs, and short, powerful forelimbs with large paws adapted for digging. Not all moles are venomous. The only species that is known for sure to possess venom is the European mole. Like venomous shrews, the European mole uses its venomous bite to paralyze its prey, allowing the prey to be stored alive during winter for later consumption. Moles can bite and they are able to carry rabies, but there is no historical data that suggests any human has ever contracted rabies from a mole bite. And, since moles don't generally come in contact with humans unless they are handled, it is not likely that you will be bitten by a mole. Should you see any of these animals on land? Let us know how many underground animals you've seen and what you make of them. Don't forget to like subscribe and tick that little bell to stay updated with our latest content.